Hello everyone and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Battle Report. Got a larger game for you today, uh, a maximum I think. Has 20 threat been uh, increased at all in any of the new missions? If it's in any of the X-Force uh, miniatures, don't know about that yet because they still aren't released in the UK. But as far as I'm aware, 20 threat is still the maximum and that is the amount that is being played today in a match where the Avengers are going up against a Brotherhood of Mutants and the Brotherhood of Mutants team features a lot of the new releases. So we'll go into more detail about the two teams and get started on this new flatter table layout. So here are the Avengers and friends that are forming this crew. I'm trying to go with a like House of M theme with the currently available miniatures for the game. So obviously it's Avengers, so currently it is being led by Steve Rogers, Captain America. Then we also have Hawkeye who has quite the history with Scarlet Witch, including in House of M. We have Doctor Strange, who is also very prominent in the story, Wolverine who is also there, and also Spider-Man as well. The Peter Parker Spider-Man, obviously. And the tactics cards they are taking is Avengers Assemble, Second Wind, Seven Sons of Cinnabis, Exceptional hear Healing, not hearing, although he has that too, doesn't he? Or just smell, I don't know. And then also No Matter the Cost. And here is the Brotherhood of Mutants team being led, of course, by Magneto, who will be making metal constructs, including one in the power phase of turn one. Mr. Sinister, who isn't really connected to House of M at all or anything like that, he's just new and he'll be doing some gene splicing, splicing shenanigans. Toad's here just to fill space for a two-pointer, but more importantly, Magneto's children are here. We have Quicksilver and we have the scarily powerful Scarlet Witch. Looking forward to seeing how she does on the table. She uh, wants to roll skulls. They count as successes for attacks, defends and def uh, dodges. And they add extra shenanigans to her mystic based attacks. So it'll be very interesting to see how she does. She seems scary on paper, we'll see if that's true in the match. And card wise, we have Forced Extraction, Cloning Banks, The Whims of Chaos, Can I Borrow That in brackets, Yoink, and Difficult to Please. So we'll get both teams set up in a second, but here are the two missions being played today. Terrigen Cloud Sweep over the save, seen this one before, this is the threat value being played, 20 for the secure. There's two Terrigen Clouds on the map, two victory points if you drop a movement tool, two victory points if you control one of them, and then also the opponent can move one being controlled and it damages and poisons anyone in range afterwards. And then Deadly Legacy Virus Cured, 19 threat extraction, this came with Mr. Sinister, and it has a error on it, it says to use map E, this has now been errated to also use map C, so both these are actually using map C. There's three Legacy Virus, or Vials of Cure, on the map, one victory point for each held, during the cleanup phase, if at any point a single character holds all three, they immediately die, but you score eight victory points. So again, they've corrected this, it's not map E, it's map C. And as a result, we have the three legacy cures right down the middle of the map. Because if you went by E, it would actually be like down the line, so you'd start with one each. As opposed to having to split off so you could shenanigans and get two of them instantly on one character, potentially. And the Terrigen Clouds are actually underneath the ones on the side there. So we'll see who's deploying on each side and be back at deployment. So here we are at deployment. The Avengers are on your left, the Brotherhood of Mutants are on your right, and it will be the Brotherhood taking first activation. So, as far as deployment goes, we have Wolverine and Captain America right next to each other here. We have Hawkeye right here next to Spider-Man. It often is loans them a little bit. We have Doctor Strange right up at the end there. And then for the Brotherhood, we have Quicksilver down here by the truck. We have Mr. Sinister in the car park. We have Toad and Wanda right here. And he's got wall crawler and she can fly, so they're not going to be hindered by this building being here. And Magneto is over here, and he has erected his first metal construct within three of himself, which is pretty close to a Terrigen Cloud up in the corner there. So with the Brotherhood going first, let's get things started. So it was Pietro Maximoff to get things started, not Jeffrey Boner or whatever his name was. Anyway, he moves long, of course, because he's a speedster but he needed more than just one long move to get over to this Terrigen Cloud. So he just double moved. He's using the dumpster here for cover. He spent his one power to pick up the legacy cure that was there. So he's holding that on his person, one of the three required to OD and score eight victory points. And he is also claiming that Terrigen Cloud. And for the Avengers, it was Stephen Strange to activate. First he medium moves, but basically did the same thing as Quicksilver. He had to double move in order to get within one of both the Terrigen Cloud over there and the Legacy Cure that had been holding on it, so he paid his one power to pick that up. 
and he's hopefully going to be able to withstand the attacks of Magneto, but I guess we'll see. So next up for the Brotherhood was Mr. Sinister, and we've got to talk through some stuff because he hurt his friends, his teammates. He used, for one power, Forced Extraction. So we flip this over, active, Mr. Sinister may spend one power to play this card. Up to three allied characters within three of Mr. Sinister suffer one damage. Mr. Sinister gains genetic samples for each amount of damage suffered. So he did it from where he started and Toad and Scarlet Witch were both within three of him, just barely in her case. So they each take one damage and he, kill, he collects two genetic samples in total, one from each of them. He can have three on his person at any one time. For his actual activation, he followed Quicksilver to back him up by double medium moving over here, but uh, a lot of what Mr. Sinister can do, including one of his other tactics cards, involves collecting and storing and banking genetic samples. So he decided to get that started by <laughs> just sticking a needle into his teammates. Hawkeye activated and just medium moved twice to get right into the centre of the map in order to pay his one power to pick up the other legacy cure. So all three are now being held by people. Quicksilver has one, Doctor Strange has one, and Hawkeye has one. The Master of Magnetism himself, Magneto activated. He only moves small though, so he did move small once. That did not put him within range 3 to do his normal attack on Doctor Strange, so instead he used Fatal Attraction for the two power he has, one power plus one for there being a metal construct, to actually pick up his size two metal construct and chuck it at the good doctor. And the good doctor only got one success in his dodge roll, so he took the base damage rather than the plus one, and took two damage from that. And obviously Magneto is not close enough to count as contesting the Terrigen Cloud there. Oh sorry, as an addition also because he destroyed a train feature, his From the Ruins Brotherhood affiliation, uh, leadership affiliation, bonus kicks in and he could give out two power. He gave one power to himself and one power to Wanda. Spider-Man activated and moved long, flipped himself up with wall crawler on top of the Daily Bugle stand and is, well, that put him roughly there. And then he just kind of moved to the corner there. He obviously had more than enough movement to also be contesting that Terrigen Cloud, but Magneto can't get to it and Wanda and Toad can't reach it either. So all he would be doing is putting himself up to to get poisoned and take one damage at the end of the turn when it inevitably gets moved. So instead he's staying a safe distance back so that won't happen, or if it does go after him it won't affect Doctor Strange. And uh, Magneto was out of range for the impact webbing when he was back here anyway, so yeah, I'm moving a bit just to put him in a favourable position for next turn. And now it is over to Wanda or Toad. The Scarlet Witch was next up out of those two and she flew up onto the building for her medium move and then unleashed her basic six dice mystic attack which is Hex Bolt onto poor former love Hawkeye and only hit him for two damage but did have a skull in the attack roll which lets her put one of a numerous number of status effects on him. She opted for Incinerate to drop down his energy and mystic defense to a massive one die which is pretty bad. Although if she had picked, uh, she can do Judgment or ooh, what else? Poison and something else I'm forgetting offhand. But if she does any of those, she actually has an aura around her which makes it impossible to shake those statuses. Poison is definitely one of them which might play in very well to the Terrigen Clouds. But either way, Hawkeye took two damage, he's on fire, his, that means he's losing one defense die. Not a good day for him. Captain America was up next for the Avengers. He medium moved and then did his range 4 shield throw and not only did he get the wild required to do a ricochet bounce into another enemy nearby but it was two of the strongest rolls on four physical dice I've ever seen. Two crits in each roll so it bounced into Quicksilver who gets to reroll two because of his supersonic reflexes. He still took three damage, bounced into Mr. Sinister's brain and did four damage because he didn't get a single success on his defense. That was a ridiculous amount of damage for a usually not that great four dice physical attack. That's that stings. And apparently it's just a day of four dice physical attacks doing really well. Toad leapt up over the car with wall crawler, got within range three of Hawkeye, and did his basic tongue attack. It did three damage. It only needed to do two to daze him because of the damage Scarlet Witch did to him. So Hawkeye is dazed turn one. That is nasty, and he has dropped his um, cure legacy cure within two. Toad can't pick it up because he's not close enough, but it is on the floor and that's going to cost them points. Somewhat lacklustre end to turn one, Wolverine had nothing he could really do, he double medium moved. He is technically contesting that but obviously both of them are still conscious so you know, he's, he's not securing it, they're securing it. But it does mean he's put a little bit of pressure on two people that Captain America did a ridiculous amount of damage to. 
for next turn. So that does take us to the end of battle round one. Let's see the ongoing scores. So after a surprisingly violent turn one, the scores are actually tied up because both sides are holding a Terrigen Cloud for two victory points and both sides are holding one serum for one victory point. There is obviously the tiebreaker serum but that's on the floor now. So as we go into battle round two with the Brotherhood still going first, it's three points apiece. But as far as the Terrigen Clouds go, for each one being claimed by someone, the opponent gets to move it within two and then anyone within one takes one damage and is poisoned. So Mr. Sinister and Quicksilver have taken an additional one damage each and are poisoned, so they lose one power in the power phase now instead of gaining. Although I guess it negates each other out with the one you would normally gain. And the same can be said for Doctor Strange up there. There's also been uh, a card being played in the cleanup phase. Cloning Banks. So this is the one that has a, a ratted text online. But it gets played face up. Mr. Sinister can store uh, genetic samples he's had on his person on this card in any cleanup phase and then eventually in the power phase he can spawn a character from the 10 character roster equal to half of the number of genetic samples on this in total rounding down which I believe is the correction it doesn't say rounding down on here so that's the correction in the errata just to stop you getting a super powerful character early but that will now be in play the two genetic tokens he already has are also going to be placed on it So about round 2 for the Brotherhood got started with Quicksilver, he long moved but that wasn't quite enough to get within 1 of where the Serum was dropped due to a little bit of a misplace. So he had to move again so he was just within 1 pulling back as far as he can, paid 1 of his power to pick it up so he is now holding 2 of the Legacy Cures. And also just because, uh, just because rather forgot to mention it, Magneto has set up his Metal Construct for this turn right over there. Hawkeye was first up for the Avengers and he took advantage of Quicksilver's wounded state. He fired his quiver of arrows into him, did two damage, only needed to do one, so Quicksilver is dazed. He dropped the two serums, they were placed basically right there and right there. So for his other action, Hawkeye moved next to them, spent one power on each of them to pick them up, and then spent two down to one because of Captain America's affiliation bonus for Hook Arrow, and has launched himself over here to relative safety now holding two of the cures so the Avengers have all three just not on the same person. Magneto activated and moved in so that he was contesting this Terrigen Cloud then he did his basic attack which is reverse polarity I believe yes and because Doctor Strange was within two he could reroll any of his attack dice so Doctor Strange didn't bother spending on Horath's Hori Wisdom because statistically it was not likely he'd survive with only three health remaining all said and done, Magneto did do 4 health, so that was enough to daze him. He then spent 1 to pick up the serum that Doctor Strange was holding, and then spent 2 on his uh, his throw, which is totally called Fatal Attraction, to pick up his own Metal Construct again, chucked it at Spidey, and he took 1 damage from that. Wolverine was next up and started with a 3 down to 2 cost, the best at what I do, thanks to Cap's leadership. He flung himself, followed by an Adamantium Slash. It did 0 damage. Mr. Sinister is sitting here in 1 health. So then he had to do another one, just as his other action. This one did three damage, again, only needed to do one. So Mr. Sinister is dazed. Uh, Wolverine is the only one currently claiming the Terrigen Cloud there. And yeah, nothing else he could do. Wanda activated and moved down medium, then fired another Hex Bolt at Hawkeye, because she just will not stop picking on him. It did three damage. He has five health on his uh, wounded side. So then she spent three on her telekinesis to pick up the bugle stand that was there and whack it right into him. The bugle stand counts as size three according to like the number underneath it. So three plus one. He dodged a little bit, but not enough. Oh, well, sorry, sorry, also she put bleed and incinerate on him because there was two skulls in her attack with hex bolt. Anyway, the, the bugle getting chucked into him did two damage, more than enough. The Hawkeye has been murdered by Wanda yet again and he has dropped the two serums he was holding and they've been placed over there. Like, she is nasty. Peter Parker Spider-Man activated, he shot some impact webbing at Magneto to no effect, did not get through his defense. So then he retreated long and he spent two power to pick up the two serums. So he's now playing keep away with the two serums and it's over to Toad to end the Brotherhood's turn I think because of all the knockouts. So next up for the Brotherhood was actually Magneto thanks to the difficult to please tactics card. It's an active, if an allied Scarlet Witch has dazed or KO'd someone, she murdered Hawkeye, and Quicksilver interacted with or picked up an objective, he did pick up a serum prior to him dropping them both from being dazed, Magneto can play this card, remove the activated token from Magneto, meaning he can take another turn. So Magneto activated, 
He moved away from the Terrigen Cloud to try and chase down Spider-Man. He moved small, then he did his reverse polarity on him for three damage. He has four, so he had, uh, sorry, he had one on him for four total damage. One health remaining, wasn't enough to kill him. So he spent one to pick up the lamp post, uh, sorry, the traffic light that was there. Chuck that at him, but thanks to Spidey Sense, Spider-Man dodged it. So he's sitting on one health remaining, but Magneto is chasing him down. That is a powerful card if you can make it happen. So in order to secure Terrigen Cloud, Captain America double moved over to this one to help Wolverine claim it. Mr. Sinister is obviously dazed, but Toad could have made it over and that would have made it uh, contested. So just making sure that that's not going to be the case. And it is over to Toad to end an exceptionally bloody battle round two. So Toad hopped on forwards and then actually did hop for two power to be placed within two, which let him do an attack on Spider-Man to try and chip off that last HP with his basic tongue, tongue lash attack. And he failed. The dodge from Spider Sense kicked in again, or rather, you know, the rerolls from Spider Sense. So Spider Man lived, although even if he hadn't, I doubt Toad would have wanted to pick it up because he would probably want Magneto to. But Spider Man has held on to them, and we are at the end of the battle round. So, at the end of battle round 2, there was not a lot of victory point gain for the Brotherhood, although they have certainly done a lot of damage to the Avengers ranks. A lot of people wounded, Hawkeye is gone. But the only victory point they scored was from Magneto holding on to one of the Legacy Cures. The Terrigen Cloud over by Doctor Strange, nobody claimed because Doctor Strange is dazed and Magneto chased down Spider-Man. So, the Avengers, they hold this Terrigen Cloud, Terrigen rather, which should be moved a little bit there, but for two victory points, Wolverine and Captain America take one damage each and are poisoned, and Spider-Man of course is holding on to the two other legacy cures, meaning that they gained a total of four victory points. So as we're going to battle round three, it's the Avengers going first, uh, wait, is it the Avengers going first? Yes, it is. The Avengers are going first this time because Toad went last there. And they are leading 7 to 4. So about round 3 got started with Spider-Man activating for the Avengers because he had to get out of dodge. But first, just pointing out that's where Magneto grew his metal construct this turn. He spent uh, 3 down to 2 or 2 down to 1, whichever, for Webapult to chuck Toad into the telephone booth, which actually is smaller than him. So actually, no, Toad, Toad is the exact same size, so it would still be there. Never mind. Chucked him into it for one damage, and then he double long moved, because it doesn't say the legacy cures slow you down at all. So he double long moved, and ran away as far as he possibly could, because Magneto moves slow, so it's very unlikely he's going to catch him. Wanda activated, and for her first activation of the, her turn, she moved forward to medium. She then spent three on telekinesis to pick up the truck that had been there, size four. Uh, yeah, four and then chucked it into Spider-Man, who did okay with his dodge, but he still took two damage and he only needed to take one, so he is dazed. He has dropped both of the legacy cures he was holding, and then for her other actual action, as I see one of my dogs here is on the table, Wanda just used a range four hex bolt and shot Wolverine in the back. He's got terrible mystic defense of two, although the roll was still pretty bad. He just took one single point of damage, but a very effective turn for Wanda, and both those cures are now just sitting on the floor. With little choice but to keep the game of keep away going, Wolverine activated, double medium moved, and spent his two power to pick up the two serum, sorry, the two legacy cures. So he's now holding them, and his healing factor has also healed him back to full health. Mr. Sinister was next up for the Brotherhood of Mutants, and he did two genetic alterations, I think they're called, for one power each, on Captain America to take advantage of his just three mystic defense. The first one hit for one damage and it also steals some genetic material from him, so that will be on him and then placed on the uh, cloning vac card at the uh, end phase, in the clean phase. The second attempt to do it though did absolutely nothing, both attack rolls in general were terrible. So Captain America just took one additional damage, I think that puts him at two in total. He is still contesting, and I guess Quicksilver could go cool and put it into Brotherhood priority, but we'll see how the rest of the turn plays out. It's over to... Just Doctor Strange or Captain America left for the Avengers. Doctor Strange activated, still wanting to stay next to that Terrigen Cloud. So he did the, the Crimson Bands of Citroark, or however it's pronounced, for a massive four power. Hit Magneto, it only did one damage, however, he got a hit, wild, and a crit. Which means whether or not it did damage, it binds Magneto and gives him an activated token so he will not be getting a turn, which is pretty amazing. He then just did his basic uh, bolts of bedazzle bedazzlement, rather, and that did two. So all in all, to knock over a bin, Magneto has taken three damage and won't be getting a turn. Quicksilver activated next for the Brotherhood and he proved what speedsters can do this turn, although first, quickly, have been forgetting to mention, but when uh, scenery has been getting destroyed, the Brotherhood affiliation bonus has been getting used, just 
been forgetting to mention it. So first of all, Quicksilver spent two on his speedster skill, which is just a move long as a superpower. So he did, and that put him within range three to do his basic attack on Wolverine. It only did one damage, but that was all it needed to do, because then Can I Borrow That slash Yoink was played. After an attack made by an ally Quicksilver that damaged an enemy character holding an asset is resolved, he can spend two to play this card, which he did. Move one asset from the target character to Quicksilver. He picks it up and is now holding it, but you're not allowed to use this to hold more than the Crisis cards would specify. So he just stole one of the legacy cures from Wolverine and he still had an action left so he moved long and he is also helping, he's misplaced slightly, there we go, he is helping Mr. Sinister control this Terrigen Cloud. Simple enough turn for Captain America, he did two of his basic strikes, five physical on Mr. Sinister and each actually managed to do two damage leaving him on one health before he is DED dead. So he did okay but unfortunately he didn't die this turn so the Brotherhood are claiming that Terrigen Cloud. And now it is over to Toad, I think, to end the turn. So Toad moved forward, Medium spent two to hop again, and that put him close enough to do his basic attack on Wolverine, but Wolverine fully blocked it. And because Magneto wasn't getting a turn, and because Spider-Man was dazed, uh, it is now the end of Battle Round 3, so we go to the scoring. So things are getting rough for both sides at the end of Battle Round 3. The Avengers hold the Terrigen Cloud at the top of your screen. Oh, and I've got to mark it on the table, but Doctor Strange is once again, po once again poisoned and has taken one damage, and that stores him two victory points. But they only hold one of the serums thanks to one being stolen by Quicksilver, so that puts them in total at ten as we go into battle round four. They will be getting first activation though. The Brotherhood hold this portal, uh, this portal, this Terrigen Cloud for two victory points, but Quicksilver and Mr. Sinister are both poisoned. Now, this was going to go on to the Cloning Vat card, however, to avoid just being insta-killed, Mr. Sinister is using this, he, he has a passive that says whenever he takes damage, or would take damage, he can discard genetic tokens to negate the damage. So he will negate the damage from the portal, because otherwise he'd be dead. So that's the only thing keeping him on the table. And Quicksilver has a Serum uh, Cure, and so does Magneto for two victory points, putting the Brotherhood at 8 versus 10, and with that let's jump into Battle Room 4. So it was Captain America who went first for this Battle Room, but just showing you where Magneto has erected his other uh, metal construct. Captain America stayed, Captain America rather, diction is important, stayed where he was and did two shield slams for a total of four power. First one on Mr. Sinister, which did one damage, which is exactly enough that Mr. Sinister is gone. We will not be seeing a cloning bank play, which is unfortunate, but it didn't really work out. He did the other one on Quicksilver, pushed him back small because he's size 2, Mr. Sinister wouldn't have because he's size 3. Did two damage to him, and then ended his activation by playing Second Wind, so he and any other Avengers can play one, and those that do remove a special condition and one damage. So he is removing, oh, I actually forgot to remove the poison, because it is and, isn't it? Oh no, it's only stun, sorry. Well, either way, he's healed himself for one damage, and Wolverine healed himself for one damage. Scarlet Witch activated, she moved forwards medium, and then when she was in a big cluster like that, played the final tactics card for the Brotherhood, the Whims of Chaos. So she can spend up to three, and then she picks a character within three for each power spent. If it is an ally, they remove one damage. Toad removed one damage. And if it's an enemy, she can either give them Hex, Root, or Incinerate. So she set Wolverine and Spider-Man on fire because that's just what she do. And then for her other actual action, she fired a Hex Bolt at Wolverine, and it did a staggering five damage. He's got seven health on his uh, healthy side though, so he is still alive. He didn't have the power to use exceptional healing either to negate it. He is alive. She could technically throw this at him, but it's very, very unlikely to kill him, so she wanted to save her power for a potential big play next time if there is another turn. So it's over to the Avengers, and Wolverine's in a spot of bother. So it was Wolverine's turn to get out of dodge, and he actually had a pretty amazing turn. First of all, Avengers Assemble was played, so any number of active Avengers, which as far as people left on the table was just Captain America and Wolverine, the Spider-Man and Doctor Strange are not classed as Avengers, they can spend one in the advanced small. He spent one, and was advanced small, then he medium moved for his first actual action, and then did a best at what I do for three down to two, or two down to one, whatever it is, I always forget to do a move plus an adamantium slash and any wild count as two hits. He went straight into Quicksilver, did four damage, just needed to do two. Quicksilver is down. He dropped to the serum he was holding and Wolverine paid one to pick it up. So Wolverine is holding two and at the end of his activation, he healed two of his damage. So he's back down to three. 
Toad chased after Wolverine, moving up medium, which put him just within three to do his basic tongue attack, but Wolverine dodged all the damage and took nothing from it, so Toad didn't do anything there. And it is over to Spider-Man or Doctor Strange now. Spider-Man, whose incinerate token did not follow him, there we go. Medium, sorry not medium, long moved, like one and two thirds, to there so that he could web line Magneto and pull him small toward him, because Magneto, despite being on a bigger base, is still size two. So it works on him as long as he's within four. And doing some quick maths on the point, Magneto has no choice during his activation but to move onto that Terrigen Cloud, or the Avengers actually win. And even if he does move on to Doctor Strange goes last, and if he manages to do the three damage Magneto needs to get dazed or in some manner makes him move, it'll still happen. So I guess we'll see, but yeah, that kind of came up really suddenly because the Brotherhood felt like they were like rushing ahead with this. Yeah, so Magneto did just small move twice for his activation to get within one of that Terrigen Cloud. He doesn't even want to try and throw in anything, he wants to save all his power so that he can buff his defense and use his Mystic Defense of 6. So it just comes down to what Doctor Strange does, here we go. So Doctor Strange tried his best, but nothing happened, well one thing happened. Magneto took one damage from one of the bolts he fired at him. Both times he spent two power to use Force Projection, so he gets to use his 6 Mystic Defense. And, more importantly, because normally the bolts have push on them, he becomes immune to push and throw. So Magneto is alive on 2 HP, and that does mean that the Avengers will not win this turn. They're still exceptionally likely to win next turn, but we'll go into it and see, I guess. So that Terrigen Cloud at the top of your screen is contested between Doctor Strange and Magneto. And th that also means that... Oh, actually, no, it's owned by the Brotherhood, isn't it? Because uh, Doctor Strange is on his wounded side. So actually, they're not as far behind as I thought they would be on, well, plus the vial that Magneto was holding. That would put them on 11, which isn't terrible, actually. Over here, the Avengers obviously hold this, though, and Wolverine has two of the uh, cures as well, giving them four. So as we go into Battle Round 5, the Brotherhood do get first activation, but the Avengers have 14 victory points. So they just need to score two in some fashion. So they either need to, Wolverine to hold on to those two serums, or just hold either of the clouds and they'll do enough. But let's see what the Brotherhood can do. So Scarlet Witch activated first this turn to try and take out Wolverine. She moved in medium, then spent six power on her eight dice Mystic Cruel Twist, where you do not get additional dice for critical results. And Wolverine has two Mystic Defense normally, he's incinerated so it would have been one. Didn't even bother rolling his defense, just immediately went to playing Exceptional Healing for the only power he had left. He spent three, reduces all damage taken to one for the attack. So he took one from that. She then picked up the dumpster with Telekinesis out of Anger, chucked that at him, and that did do one damage, which I think puts him at, yeah, he's up to four of his seven now. It's not impossible that Toad might be able to take him out. I guess it just depends. So to secure those two points, Wolverine activated and he double medium moved as far away as he could get, which isn't actually putting the game in the bag, because if this turn ends with the Brotherhood claiming both Terrigen Clouds, which is not impossible currently, that would mean it would actually be a draw, both sides. Well, actually no, the Brotherhood would win by one point, because Magneto has one of the vials. So, it's up in the air technically. It comes down to Toad, because Toad is not on his flip side, so he would have priority in claiming this Terrigen Cloud. But, oh we know Captain America is still on his healthy side as well. If he manages to daze Captain America, who has two damage of, on him of his five on his healthy side, he would claim that. Obviously Scarlet Witch was not within range, unfortunately, which may have been more important than trying to kill Wolverine, although, who knows. Hindsight is 20, 20 they say, as they say. So it comes down to what Toad can do. Toad's obviously going to move in. It's down to whether or not with one attack he gets lucky enough to take out Captain America, because otherwise that's a draw. And then whatever happens over there between Doctor Strange and Magneto does not matter. So Toad did move in. He spent two power on Spit Acid. Spit Acid into Captain America, who used Vibranium Shield. And all said and done, he only took one damage. So Cap is standing. Um, they are, they're both healthy, though, so... That's a draw right there, well again, if that's a draw right there, even if that isn't a draw over there and the brother took that one, that still would not be enough because that would give him three victory points in total if you take into account the cure that uh, Magneto is holding. So the game is over at that point because there's no way Magneto can get to Wolverine and Wolverine is scoring the two necessary points. So we are at the end game. 
So just to ramp things up officially, again, it doesn't matter how this plays out, so we're just going to count the game state as it is. It is a draw at that Terrigen Cloud between Doctor Strange and Magneto. Obviously Spider-Man could easily cover distance to get in there, although he's on his wounded side. Uh, Magneto would have enough power to give himself six defense dice two more times, no, three more times actually, of a potential, yeah, three attacks, two from Doctor Strange, one from Spider-Man. So it would have been very likely he would have at least survived, maybe not necessarily that he would have taken out Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. So either way, we're counting that as a draw over there. This one is a draw between Toad and Captain America because they're both on their healthy sides. So no points scored there. Magneto holds one cure for one point, bringing the Brotherhood to 12. And Wolverine, hiding up there, <laughs> has two on him, taking the Avengers to exactly 16 and giving them the win in a battle where it felt like they were on the back foot right from the start. It was a shame that Magneto, well, Magneto got an extra activation in one turn, only to then immediately lose his activation in the following turn, so it kind of balanced out. Magneto, he's usually really, really good. I, th I feel like he was just kind of okay this time. Him giving out power for stuff getting thrown, and Scarlet Witch being able to throw things as well, especially heavy things, is a fantastic synergy, although to take both of them you need 11 points just between them for 6 and 5 threat, respectively. Speaking of which, MVP is definitely Scarlet Witch. She was terrifying. <laughs> She uh, just went around the table unhindered and dealt out damage left, right and centre and the skulls counting as successes for her was a massive help for how much damage she was dealing. So yeah, she is scary by herself. With her father though and his affiliation bonus specifically, they synergize exceptionally well in, for f in terms of feeding power to their teammates. Or each other as well because Magneto's affiliation bonus affects him as well. It's just she can only give one power to each person once per turn. But that extra power generation is nice. Mr. Sinister, that clone play, like hurting his teammates in turn one, I feel like that was a detriment for Quicksilver. That got him killed, or dazed rather. It's a shame. If he'd stayed alive and got a couple more genetic samples, he could have spawned in a three threat character as part of the Brotherhood team. Uh, or a two threat if you wanted to get desperate, like bring in a Koye or whoever. But it would have been neat to see whether it would have made a difference, who knows. Hurting his teammates to start was a bad play. But it was a new thing to try out. Using those genetic samples just to keep him alive is probably the better bet, but it was a new and fancy thing, so why not? Either way, Scarlet Witch, very scary, with Magneto even more so. Obviously, 20 threat matches are not common. If you drop Toad from the list, that brings you to 18, or if you drop Quicksilver instead, that brings you down to the standard 17 with four miniatures, both of which I feel like would still be pretty effective teams. The Avengers team used here today... I feel like they got lucky a little bit, like Captain America's shield throw in turn 2, doing like 4 damage to Quicksilver and Mr. Sinister, that just does not happen usually. Uh, it was just lucky crits on both rolls with the Ricochet as well. So that made a massive difference and that was just pure luck. That was the, the swinginess of these dice as has been mentioned many times before. But anyway, hope you enjoyed watching, thank you very much for doing so. We'll be back in the future with some more and hopefully the X Factor releases will actually, X Force rather, releases will hurry up and get to the UK but who knows when that'll happen. Thanks for watching and until next time, ta-da for now.